Where are you? And oh, I'm so sorry. Door. I cannot sleep. I cannot I dream tonight. Okay. The unsuspecting victim. victim. This is what we're choosing to do right now. Welcome to Dropy, where we take your dumb ideas and make even dumber drawings. I'm Jacob. I'm Nathan. I'm Julia. And guys, it's Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Wait, what's this? What's a twist? Oh, what? it's Newsday. <gasps> oh, it was Newsday the whole time. The T was an the N. The T was secretly an N. The Tuesday you thought you knew was no more. Wow. And it's been Newsday for as long as you can remember. The mask is removed. It was it was old man news day. It was old man news day the whole time. <laughs> Can you believe it, gang? Uh, We're doing a new thing. It. Yeah, today. That makes what sense. What are we doing? I found a fun generator online. It's a uh, part of a website called Seventh, Seventh Sanctum. Sanctum. Seventh Sanctum. Seventh Sanctum. Seventh Sanctum. We'll put a link to that in the description if you guys want to play with it too. But it's got a bunch of fun generators, and I thought it might be funny to use one of their story generators, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we'll make a movie poster based on the story that we get from the generator. We're each making our own movie poster? We're each making our own movie poster. Yay! Nathan's gonna start first, and also for this episode, we're gonna be using the romance story generator. Ooh. So we're gonna get a little sexy in it's here, gonna maybe. It's gonna get a little smoochy story right. going on. In time for Valentine's Day. Just in time. Maybe you light a candle, draw a bath, put some bubbles in it, spray your favorite aromas in the air, <laughs> light your incenses. How romantic, my your, favorite aromas, get huh? Get your massager, your oh, back massager. Boy, I hope you draw little doodles for all of those. Put your feet in the foot bath. Uh-huh. Give yourself a rub down with scented oils. Melt some chocolates. Melt over. some chocolates. <laughs> just cause. Just cause, <laughs> just melt them. Nathan. Yeah. Uh, you wanna go ahead and roll that generator? Here come my stories. So we're doing this where we're gonna roll up three and then we're gonna pick the one we like the best to do. So Nathan, you wanna read out your story prompts? This story starts in a galaxy-spanning federation. In it, a zookeeper who is an outsider attends a social event and meets a disorganized gambler. What starts as disgust unexpectedly turns into a passionate affair. Yet, how can a delusion tear them apart? Ooh, saucy. <laughs> wow. In this story, a promiscuous anthropologist is in love with a rat catcher <laughs> with unexpected depths. A rat catcher. All thanks to someone revealing their feelings. It seems a patriotic novelist will bring them even closer <laughs> together. Who's this third person? I like this thruple. <laughs> this one's got a little thruple going. And then finally, this story on a desert planet. I left out a word. This story starts on a desert planet. In it, a peasant who has an odd way of speaking is fixed up with a fear-ridden thief. What starts as obligation unexpectedly turns into true love. How romantic. I, I gotta go with the thruple. I mean, how can you say <laughs> gotta, no to I a gotta rat go catcher. with with rat catcher, anthropologist. <laughs> a promiscuous anthropologist. Promiscuous anthropologist, rat catcher with unexpected depths, and a patriotic <laughs> novelist. Who brings them together. Yeah. Yeah, oh this, boy. this one has no um like setting given. That's true. The other ones both involve planets in space. So maybe I'll just set this one in space too. You're welcome to, it's up to you. The freedom okay, so is yours. I've got to do a little movie poster. I've got to design three characters. Yeah. Um, Cause in romance movies, it's always like the posters, like, you know, both characters like doing those like smoldering looks. Yeah, what does an anthropologist look like? Jurassic Park-esque okay. yeah, adjacent kind of person. Thinking... Like, like a Jurassic Park person meets librarian. Okay, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm thinking too. Kind of disheveled, but this one's also mm -hmm. sexy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sexy and disheveled and very smart. So the patriotic novelist could be like one of their parents who like saw some sort of chemistry or like a friend or it's, it could be no, so it's many not, things. No, it's not one of their parents. Okay. They're, they're a thruple. Oh, they're a thruple. That's they're, right. They're you a thruple. So it's definitely just like. Like maybe they start off as the narrator and you're not sure who the narrator is, but then it gets revealed that it was just- It was the patriotic novelist. It was the patriotic novelist. Who was writing the story. Who loves his country and- Love. And love. <laughs> yeah, maybe the patriotic novelist was watching sort of the romance unfold between the arthropolog arthropologist? Let me try that again. 
That's someone, someone who studies who studied, Arthur. Yeah, loves Arthur, <laughs> the show. The PBS cartoon Arthur. <laughs> um, he was watching The Anthropologist and The Rat Catcher. I can't stop laughing at Rat Catcher. It's so specific. <sighs> That's like almost Dickensian. Yeah. That so job better. description. I want to get the poses all in. So Rat Catcher. Yeah. yeah. With unexpected deaths. So yeah, I feel like please the, get that in there. You need to have a look on the rat catcher like there's more to me than meets the eye. Than just rat catching. You know, sure, I rat catch, <laughs> but that's not all I do. The uh, way that we are spinning it, it may be the fact that we've said rat catching so much. It sounds like he's playing baseball, <laughs> but like just throwing a rat back and forth. <laughs> he's playing rat ball. Yeah. He's, he's a professional rat catcher. He's a professional rat catcher. The future space game of rat ball. Yeah. Do you think he secretly loves, like he just loves rats? Maybe that's when him, how him and the anthropologist bond. She sees his love of rats. Mm -hmm. And it mirrors her own love of anthropologizing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh huh. That's what Too anthropologists do. Yes, Wait. no finish. Go Wait. ahead, go ahead. I can't even think of the word that Jacob, what, what was it? Anthropologize. Thank you, Thank anthropologize. You. Yeah, it's too late to anthropologize. Oh, I like this, Nathan. It's sort of a back-to-back, -back, like yeah. looking over the I'm shoulders. Trying to, I'm trying to pose it yeah. good. I'm trying to pose it good. I and is the third person going to be like in the center, but behind them and like walking towards them? So you don't know who's looking at who. They're all looking at each other. The third, yeah, I think. So they're going to be like this. Oh. And then the third person, the novelist sort of brings them closer together. So I think the novelist is going to be sort of like looming in the background, He's maybe. Be big. Oh, is that like oh, a book? Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh. He's reading them like a book, you know what I He's mean? He's like writing it. He's like writing their love in his book. And then they find the book. <laughs> yeah. It's like Death Note, but romance? It's Love Note. It's Love Note. It's Love Note. Hey, Japan. Hey, Japan. Can you make Love Note? You made Death Note. You made Death Note. So make Love Note. The notebook that makes people fall in love. But if you don't specify the way they fall in love it within is a, 30 seconds, they have a heart attack. It's still a heart attack, yeah. <laughs> How do I indicate that this novelist is patriotic? The front of the book just says, I love the USA. It doesn't have to be patriotic for the US. I love the USA. <laughs> Nathan? There are other countries. God bless. Oh, the wait, USA. they're in space. In I love spa Mars. I love Mars. <laughs> I love Space USA. I love Space USA. Neo USA. <laughs> USA 2. <laughs> Revenge of the Revenge US. Revenge of the US. The squeakle. The squeakle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a space, space rat catcher for sure. Space yeah. rats are much more dangerous this than normal rats. Wearing. Are they like rats of unusual size? Yeah, yeah. Rod rodents of unusual. Yeah, rodents of unusual size. No, these are rats of unusual size. That they are. Yeah. In this world, being a, a space rat catcher is a very honorable position because if someone doesn't do it, the rats will overtake the USA, USA 2. Mm -hmm. And now it's in space. You wear goggles when you're catching rats in space. That's everyone, yeah. everyone knows this. Well, it's so they don't spit their venom in your eyes. Yeah, the space rat venom. Yeah, space rats will spit venom directly into your eyes and you will be blind. Rat and maybe blind. turn into a uh, space rat yourself. Space rat human hybrid. Which is forbidden. Yeah. That's and another kind of forbidden love, which we'll tackle another time. Forbidden in the New York. Oh, what if the what if the novelist is a rat? <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god. What a twist. Oh, it's all coming we, together we now. We blew it wide open. The we blew this got story freaky. wide open. The the novelist is patriotic to rats. Oh. But falls in love with this human relationship. Yeah. Which is also forbidden. But she thought she was going to catch a rat, but what she really caught was love. The He's rat's like, just writing fan fiction about, yeah. about these two ladies. <laughs> <laughs> what is this show? <laughs> this is my job. <laughs> You ever stop and think this is my job in the middle of recording an episode? Yes, very <laughs> Certainly. frequently. <laughs> yeah, the anthropologist thinks that the rats are all like a menace, but the rat catcher knows that there is there is love to There's be found. There's unexpected depth. There's unexpected depth. This rat catcher, you know, she she knows the rats and bonds yeah, with them. Yeah, these are space rats, so they've got sort of big eyes. They're like they've got sort of insectoid uh, features. Sure, that's probably what a space rat would have. 
Oh, now I'm just having fun with the design. What invented space rads? How did this come to be? They just discovered them. They so were they've out, just been out there? They've, there have been space rats longer than you or I. There's some extra eyes. So really, humans, what if humans was the true monsters of space? I think, I think that's true. I think that's what we are. Because we went to the space rat planet and made it USA too. Yeah. And then tried to eliminate oh, all the yeah. space rats. So this rat's patriotic to the original. Um, Ratopia. Yeah. And they're different, you know, they're not, they don't all look the same. Like this is a more feral yeah. space rat. They have different sort of hybridizations. Anthropologist. It's too late to anthropologize. <laughs> she's promiscuous. So yeah. She's going to be wearing a low cut shirt. Yeah, she has to look really saucy and sassy. Yeah. Um, and be like, sex, I've had it. <gasps> she little, says that in the movie. Ask and everyone out. gasps. Like with we... multiple partners. <gasps> whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at this lady. And she's the one who's like, I'm kind of married to my career right now. Yeah. I'm not looking for a, a long term for a long term thing. I'm just looking for flings. Yeah. That's what she thinks. That's what she thinks. But really Nothing can change my mind. Until in walks rat catcher. In walks rat catcher, and it's like, wow, this rat catcher has some unexpected depth. I did not expect this depth in this rat catcher, to be completely honest. I'm not expecting any depth from this rat catcher, and then the rat catcher displays depth, and it's like, oh, how unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we start brainstorming some titles for this movie? Because yeah. we're going to need one. Yeah. Catch me if you can, already taken. Already if you can, already, oh my God. Rat me if you can. Rat me if you can. No. Three's rat company. <laughs> Chucky Three's. Like, like Chucky like Cheese? Like Chucky Cheese, because he's a rat. Yeah. E2 <laughs> rat catcher Tambien. <laughs> <laughs> rat. A two E. Rat Rat a three. Rat a three E. It's the sequel to Rat a two. The third one. <laughs> there was Cause, only one. Because there are three of them. There are three. There are three lovers. This is Rat a three E. This is Rat a three E. <laughs> has nothing to do with Rat a two E. The movie. No. <laughs> but much as you make a Rat a two E, you have to combine these disparate ingredients, and they form one delicious dish. The rat a day, like the holiday, but rats. It's called rat a three. Dang it. Okay. How could it be called anything else? You're right. I'm sorry. Pixar. Pixar? <laughs> are you watching? <laughs> I know you are. Pixar's always watching. Pixar's always watching, looking for their next big hit. That, that's what they come to, to draw fee for. Yeah. Got to give this promiscuous lady a face. Yeah, you got to put a face on this lady. This, these are good poses, though. Yeah, Thank these you. are great. You're really took, locked in took these me, poses. Took me long enough, but we got there. This is kinda, it's, you can't make something this perfect. Can't in, rush art. Can't, you can't rush perfection, Nathan. Julia, I expect you to just fix all of the problems with the way the clothing works. You got it. Uh, when you render this. Julia, just fix everything. Can you just fix my drawings? Yeah. Put a face on this lady. Yeah. A promiscuous face. A promiscuous yeah. face. She's got to be smirking. Like half-lidded. Yeah. Yeah. Making sexy eyes. Yeah. Bedroom eyes, if you would. Whatever that means. These are the eyes I make when I'm in my bedroom, and I'm very sleepy, and I'm about to go to bed. Oh, I love a, a, some low glasses. Heck yeah. Peering over the top. Being like, She's I don't even, smart and promiscuous. I don't need these glasses to see them good looks. She's got her papers she's got her anthropology papers that she's written that she's herself. written herself she's a professional anthropologist mm -hmm. she's out there in the field studying space rats but she doesn't realize it's like a how to train your dragon yeah. scenario because space rats anthropology is like studying like people history right yeah she's not yeah. good at anthropology <laughs> she she has a theory that space rats and people share a common ancestor yeah and then this this rat that's the novelist is the missing link. Oh, look at that. That makes sense. That makes sense, Nathan. <laughs> Does it? Nathan, that makes sense. I think people are going to buy it. 
Okay. And they're going to buy tickets to this film. They're definitely going to buy tickets to this film. Hold the papers. Hold the papers. <laughs> She's holding them <laughs> good enough. <laughs> I like that they still use paper in space. Yeah, space paper. Space it's, paper. It's different. Yeah. So this is Rata 3 e Rata 3. The space romance rat catching movie yeah, that the people have been some, clamoring for. Put some space in the background. Yeah, get some space back there so you know. <laughs> so you know it's space. You got to know where we are. We're in space. We're in space. Oh, my God. What you an did it, dude. What an ordeal. Perfect. This turned out great. This is <sighs> good. Okay. Someone else. You want to swap seats with me? Yes. All right, it's my turn. Yes. I'm going to roll up three more stories. Let's see what we got. In this story, a dancer who belongs to a secret organization becomes infatuated with a stupid hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Yet how can longing tear them apart? Okay. In this story, an arch druid in love with an artificial life form works with an immoral linguist. What starts as hate quickly becomes infatuation, all thanks to an unveiling. Yet how can a rascal tear them apart? <laughs> this story takes place in a military town. In it, an archmage with a rival in his or her profession attends a professional event and meets a happy veterinarian. <laughs> <laughs> what starts as an obligation quickly becomes infatuation, all thanks to temptation. So that archmage just falls... So this, this <laughs> mystical, magical job falls in love with... A happy a veterinarian. veterinarian. A veterinarian. Well, maybe it's a uh, it's a mage that does a lot of like animal tricks, and the veterinarian. It's like my bunnies that I pull out of hats keep getting sick. <laughs> they have magic sickness. Please help, veterinarian. And the veterinarian's like, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I kind of want to do the dancer and the stupid hunter. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's funny. I so, like the phrase "stupid hunter" yeah. because. It could be a hunter that's stupid or a hunter that hunts stupid. He hunts stupid. I'm a stupid hunter. <laughs> I hunt the stupid. That sounds stupid. It's not. It's not. It's definitely not stupid. <laughs> okay, so here's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. I think I want the hunter to be stupid. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think I want him to be stupid. Yeah. Okay, it's I a, like that decision. It's a stupid hunter. Because like a dancer in a secret organization sounds like a very like... That's a lot of pressure. Like That's a, double pressure. I think it would be a person who's like very like uh, graceful. Yeah. yeah, like a almost like a femme fatale kind of thing. Yeah, you know? and like graceful and like sort of like self possessed, you know, and like knows what she's about. Yeah. And so I want to get like sort of like a graceful like reaching pose over here, where she's like sort of reaching out. Oh yeah. Uh, to the stupid hunter, and then the hunter's like, they're. He's going to be, yeah, like looking in the totally wrong direction, being an idiot. Uh, yeah, let's get like a leg going going down this and way. And then maybe. longing might tear them apart. Yeah, because she's like longing for him. Uh -huh. And he's a big, stupid he's idiot. He's a big, dumb idiot. So it, it will tell, tear them apart, but he's not going to really notice. Right, because she's, she's become infatuated with him. Yeah, because she's looking for some sort of like simplicity in her life, maybe. Mm -hmm. Some stability. She's got you know? too much going on. She just wants something like simple and good. Yeah. And maybe he's like really nice, but he's a stupid idiot dingus. <laughs> you know, he's just a nice idiot. He's just a nice idiot who also hunts. Yeah, who, what is, who what also is he, hunts. What does he hunt? Probably not anything very well. Okay. It could be like an idiot savant. Like he's a good hunter, just stupid at other stuff. Stupid at everything else. Yeah. I know people like that. Maybe... Like, yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe he's really good at hunting. Yeah, but like the he's he's perceived as stupid by, you know, society because he never learned the customs <sighs> and the society. norms of the city life. He's I hate used society. to he's used to the the countryside where he can commune with the animals and hunt them. <laughs> Which isn't like super cool to do. After you've communed with them, well, you know he does. He, I like to imagine that he's not like, you know, he uses the whole. Yeah, he's one of those yeah, hunters sure. that that only does it when it's needed. He like and he thanks all the animals. He thanks the beast before he consumes it, sort of thing. Yeah, he uses the the pelts and the the antlers and whatnot. He's not like, he's not like a rich dingus who's got just like a bunch of heads hanging out. For sure, that makes in a sense. Trophy room. 
Maybe he wasn't stupid at all. Maybe we're stupid. Maybe we're stupid. Maybe we're stupid for judging him. Maybe the movie wants to ask the question of you, hey, maybe you're stupid. Hey, you maybe, ever consider that? Hey, maybe this character that we've told you is stupid is, in fact, the genius. And maybe you're the stupid And maybe idiot. you're the stupid idiot. Makes you think. Makes you think, dummy. If you could think. <laughs> if you even could. <laughs> I want to make a really antagonistic movie. Yeah, a, a movie that really... Um, it's not really for anyone. <laughs> no. No a one movie, enjoys this film. A movie that's not for anyone is meant for film students. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, film students. <laughs> About time we really took a shot at film students. I once got called a film student yeah? as an insult. Really? By like a drunk guy. How is it an insult? Um, you just a appreciate a, a dang good movie. It was like, okay, so I was at, I was in college, I was visiting a different college, and there were these two guys who were wearing the same clothes uh, walking together, and I was like, oh, they match, and the guy got, got angry that I said that they matched, even though they did match. <laughs> well, you shouldn't have said that they did. Yeah, and so he got, he started getting all threatening up in our faces, and it was like, okay, man, we don't need to do this. And he was like, listen, there are 20 of us and only eight of you film students. <laughs> it's like, well, I, I don't want to fight you. There were also only two of them. Oh. He was just very drunk. <laughs> he, was, he, he didn't really understand what was going on, I think. But I think he didn't like the fact that he had possibly worn the same shirt and pants as this other guy that he was with. I'm sure he was a very secure sort of person. But anyway, he called us all film students and I thought that was very funny. <laughs> the ultimate insult. Yeah. Film student. Film student. This is Brie Larson. This kind of is Brie Larson as Captain Marvel. Yeah. Isn't it? This is the well this is the st the interpretive dance version now of you've Captain given her Marvel. Cora's outfit. Yeah, she's kind of Cora too. <laughs> she's just all badass ladies. Yeah. Well, I mean, she sounds cool. Yeah, yeah she's as a all dancer good in a secret society, but she's she's longing for this stupid oh, yeah. hunter because he's not burdened by societal expectations. Yeah, and he like you like know, dance and <laughs> secret societies. He's maybe like you know, like you said, he lives a very innocent style of life. Yeah, he, he takes hasn't had to what do the needs. things that she's had to do. Because I imagine she's maybe like sort of an assassiny type figure too. Right. Yeah, what do secret societies have you do? Probably assassinate. Yeah, because you use your dancing as like a cover up to get to get access and then no one suspects the dancer. No. But then you can use your like, you know, balletic dance moves to like get to places you shouldn't. Th this is what the the killer song uh, are we human or are we dancer is about. Yeah, I that think. song will be in this movie. It'll yeah. be the only song in it's this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and it plays through the whole movie. It plays through the whole movie on repeat. It never stops. It does get like softer or louder. Yeah, different, um, different covers of it also, like different, yeah. uh, different arrangements. But it is always that, <laughs> just that song. Oh, and he's just thinking about the hunt. Yeah, he wears like a big pelt. Oh yeah, keeps him nice and warm. And maybe he's got sort of like a like a wildman's hair. <laughs> <laughs> I go into the barber shop and I say, "Give me the wildman's hair." What would, <laughs> what would you like? Numbers one through five. Actually, I would like the wildman's. Oh, Give the wildman's! <laughs> I see we have a discerning they, customer. They ring the bell. It's yeah. like we've got a wildman's, and then everybody gathers around to give me the wildman's. He puts the scissors down and yeah. takes out like a little hatchet. Yeah, <laughs> just. <laughs> These are some hot actors. In yeah, this, they have to be very in this hot. movie. Well, we've established that Brie Larson is one of it them. It is Brie Larson. That's Brie Larson, yeah. yeah. And who yeah, I we, I didn't cast my movie. Um That's I mean, true. obviously, well, I guess it's um The Rat's Josh Gad. It's a Pixar. The Rat <laughs> the Rat is played by jo the the Rat uh, author uh patriotic novelist is is uh Josh Gad. Um obviously. And then the two the uh I'm going to say the um, the rat catcher, that is America Ferrera. America Ferrera. America yes. Ferrera is she's the, from Superstore. Is the rat catcher? 
from Superstore. From Superstore. Superstore is America Ferrera. And oh God, How to Train Your Dragon. Uh, so yeah, it's America Ferrera, and then the the lusty uh, anthropologist is of course. Could be like a Scarlett Johansson type. Yeah, maybe it's a. Oh, maybe it's Rachel McAdams. Oh, that'd be a good one. Yeah. Definitely could be a Rachel McAdams. It's Rachel McAdams. She doesn't have to date any more time travelers in movies. Not after you get her in this movie. No. It becomes, this becomes her franchise. Yeah. Rachel she McAdams. refuses to do any other movies. America Ferreira and Josh Gad. And it is all, it's fully animated. It's a Pixar, it is a Pixar movie. So these are just the voice actors for the, for the roles. So who plays this idiot man? Idiot hunter. Who's like a big but gentle hot guy? Big but gentle hot guy. Uh, one of the Hemsworths. Oh yeah. Oh, he could be a Hemsworth. This a, could be a Liam. This could be Liam. Is this a Liam Hemsworth? This would be a Liam, I think. The gentler Hemsworth. The gentlest of Hemsworths. Definitely not the forgotten Hemsworth, <laughs> whose like name is like Carb or something. Carb. <laughs> Carb Hemsworth. He's definitely got more of like a fantasy vibe. Yeah. And um, she's got more of a sci-fi vibe. Yeah. Like she comes to a planet. Because I guess it's all sci-fi. This is all sci-fi. <laughs> it's all sci-fi romance. She comes to a planet that, uh, you know, he is on. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a, like a Pocahontas situation. Yeah. Um, she falls in love with like his, his peaceful ways. Which may seem simple to her, but they have their own sort of logic and merit. Yeah. In the way that he lives. He could also be a John Cena if John Cena had long hair. He could not be John Cena. Mm. You take it back. Mm. He could what not What about be. a Vin? What about a Vin no! Diesel? No. Look at his hair. Vin Diesel in a wig. <laughs> Vin Diesel in a wig. <laughs> you can't put Vin Diesel in a wig. No, the hair is CGI'd on. This, the hair, it's Vin Diesel, but the hair is played by Andy Serkis. I'm a hunter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hunt. I hunt is what I do. It's what I do. Every animal is part of my family. My family. Mia, you're a dancer. He's going to be, I know what he's going to be holding. This is about to tie it all together. You ready for this shit? Uh huh. You one of those dashboard shit? confessionals. One of those, one of those dashboard dancey bobblehead things. No, it's going to be a. Oh. A, I think a, it would a be very funny. Ballerina music box. Oh. oh. That's, so he's like. He's got that connection. So he he's had this since he was a child. But he doesn't get it. And so when he meets her, you know, maybe he falls in love too, but doesn't know that she's part of this secret society, mm. other world. He thinks she's someone that she's not. I see. His eyes are so big and innocent. He's big and innocent. He's a big, innocent, beautiful boy. What about his other hands do? They go out like this. And so he's like, you're just like the woman from the music box that my mother left me before she was mauled by... Tiger bears. I still love the tiger bears. Yeah. They were just doing, you know, they their just, instinct. They they maul. They're just gonna maul sometimes. She knew but, what they did. Yeah, and then the, uh, that's uh, that's Chekhov's tiger bear. So obviously the tiger bears are gonna come back towards the end of the movie. Yeah. They're gonna have to do some some fighting, some dance fighting. Definitely. And maybe he's got a big sword. For maybe hunting. he's he's like a monster. He's hunter. like a monster hunter. <laughs> yeah. So he's just got there's a some really crazy, fucking yeah, giant sword. There's some crazy monsters on this planet. There's like the city where all the high society lives, and then there's just big ass monsters roaming around. Yeah, but he respects and loves them all. Yeah. That's kind of his thing. Okay, now I just need to like poster it up. There's like maybe like back here, this is like the planet. Some extreme monster fighting sequences for like anyone who's not into that, who's just there for the romance, can go to the bathroom during. And then there's like some nice romance parts where anyone who is just there for the monster hunting can go to the bathroom for. Yeah. Because movies, they're too long and there's and I not. I have to a, go to the bathroom. And I do have to go to the bathroom. So you got to pick a part where it's okay for me to go to the bathroom. And I never know. And I wish they would just tell you. It's like you don't need to watch this next part. It's pretty good, but like you don't need to watch this next part. Yeah, you don't part. need to, this one's not for you. And maybe there's just like some good space back here. Like we're just gonna show Brie Larson on a motorcycle for a while. Yeah. So you can you can go real quick. This would have been nice to know. A heart around the planet. This movie's called Love Planet. Love Planet it has nothing to do with dancing or hunting. It's called dancing with 
hunt tiger bears. Dance, dancing with tiger bears on Love Planet. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it's a beautiful film. Everyone, please go see it. Uh, Julia, you want to hop in and do one? Yes, I do. My turn. Give it a roll. In this story, a crazy repairman is in love with a slothful airline pilot, all thanks to a lie. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Okay. All thanks to a lie. <laughs> I want to know what lie. I'm not a crazy repairman. I love you. All the repairmen I've had so far have been crazy. Well, not me. I'm definitely not crazy. <laughs> this story takes place on a prairie planet. In it, a scatterbrained scientist becomes infatuated with a monk who tends to annoy non-humans. What role will someone doing laundry play in their relationship? It's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. I love the ones that end with a question. Yeah. <laughs> this story takes place in an interplanetary techno techno technocracy. technocracy. In it, an aloof traveler crosses paths with an unathletic hermit. What starts as a <laughs> curiosity unexpectedly turns into a passionate affair. All thanks to a discovery. Unathletic. The discovery is a big dog. <laughs> this hermit hates sports. <laughs> like, listen, I'm, I'm not. I'm just not into I it. Just I'm not good at it. I, I don't understand. The hand eye coordination is not for me. That's why I left. That's why I became a hermit. I Everyone wanted me to do sports. I kept getting picked last for kickball, and I hated it. And so I left. I kind of like the last one. Yeah? That's what I'm going to do. The aloof traveler and the unathletic hermit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, I right, like let's it. Let's see it then. All right. All right. Aloof traveler crosses paths with an unathletic hermit. Let's figure out what a technocracy is. is a, Maybe that will help. It's a, is it like a democracy, but all of the people in power are, are robots? The robots. Uh, the think? government or control of society or industry by an elite of technical experts. So the government's run by like Zuckerbergs. super okay. by Zuckerbergs, yeah. Okay. A, a whole imagine a whole government of Zuckerbergs breathing down your neck. God, that sounds awful. I'm gonna have this person be real close. Okay. Is this the hermit? Yeah. They're in a hermit posture. Yeah. I want they they have to be unathletic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think what I'm gonna do. Don't think. Don't make anyone think for a second that this person could do a sport. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Their their whole face is just gonna be like. Oh, really? I can't do sports. I can't do sports. Can't catch a ball, can't throw a ball. There you go. Nothing involving a ball. Leave, get, get those balls away from me. <laughs> so I think, yeah. And then we have an aloof traveler. Yeah. Okay, so I wanna, I'm going to set a scene here. A traveler and a hermit, just sort of like off on their own in like a technological society. Yeah. Yeah. Where where do you like go to become a hermit in a in a technological society? Yeah. A tiny tiny apartment. So maybe he's like tired of being monitored, you know. Oh, by true. By the elite council of Zuckerbergs. Yeah. Yeah. He's he just he's, he's trying to think of a way to not be connected to the grid. Yeah. They're like But he's unathletic. Yeah, you're you're <laughs> unathletic. You could get some robot augmentations to make you more athletic. And he's like, No, I don't want to. I, I just want to be left alone. I just want to be myself. Is that not okay? Can the I just be myself? The traveler's like, maybe I know a place. Yeah. So, a discovery. Oh yeah, okay. maybe they discovered a place where there's no Wi Fi. Yeah. <laughs> where they can go and be free. I wanna move everyone over a little bit. I wanna move I wanna move our, our our hermit over. Mm -hmm. I really like this face you've put on yeah. the hermit. <laughs> I hope it doesn't change much. I don't know if it'll stay, but I do like it. It has to stay. It's a good base, yeah. even if you add more details. Face base. Face base. Face base in space. Okay, so now I gotta get our aloof traveler here. Who's this on the left? Just some some guy that's sitting next to him, because I think they're gonna be like at a at a bar or a restaurant or something. Like this guy's thinking about how he can get off the grid, but this traveler is like, you know romancing people in every city. Oh, you he's so know, he's like hitting up the bars and the restaurants. A rich, you know, playboy type. He's doing sort of a, a music man. Yeah, but little does he know what he's about to find is no one night fling. Yeah. He's sure. like he's just going to be like, "Whoa, tech. Whoa, that guy's so unathletic." 
technology. I love that sad man over there. With I've, capital T. I've never been with anyone so unathletic before. <laughs> Everyone I've been with has augmented themselves to yeah. be, you know, perfect. You're so soft and malleable. <laughs> I want to so doughy. I want to <laughs> rub all your your folds. I want to rub all your folds and flaps <laughs> and bits, especially the bits. Especially the bits. <laughs> oh, so he's like was in the middle of a conversation with someone else, and yeah. he's turned and looked. Yeah, I like, think like a hey, lot I'm, of people are hitting on him. You know, it's like I'm I'm talking to you. Are you just gonna ignore me? Wow, it just makes me want you more. <laughs> Why are you looking at that weird, sad skeleton? <laughs> Yeah, okay, so... It doesn't look like he could hit a tennis ball if his life depended on it. Yeah, so, like, a lot of people are trying to get this this aloof traveler, because this aloof traveler is very good-looking. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> As evidenced by those eyes. <laughs> okay. Very good-looking. Very good-looking. Like, maybe he has some, like, really cool technologies on him. Or maybe they're so cool, it doesn't look like he has any at all. Mm -hmm. You know? And that's like attractive because people are like, wow, oh, you don't maybe, look like anyone else. Maybe he is unaugmented as well. <gasps> He's naturally very beautiful, but no one knows that. Everyone thinks it's augments. Yeah. And so he sees someone else with the courage to be unaugmented. And <laughs> that's what attracts him. Yeah, even though he's a he's a sad a sad sack man. He's a sad sack man, but he's true to himself. Can I um can I make a, a casting recommendation? For this hermit? Yes. Please do. William H. Macy. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> William what? H. Macy would be good. H. Macy. Yeah. He does have just like the doughiest, sad face. That's good. Oh, he's got a nose. Well, yeah. Dang. Do you not want <laughs> him to have a nose? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want him to just keep looking like a Oh, he's got a nose? <laughs> I just, I loved his face so much. Okay, I'll keep, I'll, I'll keep like the eyes it. and stuff. How about that? That will make me happy. Okay, so should his hair just be like? <laughs> <laughs> he looks like the, the penguin from Gotham, like that. <laughs> That young boy that plays the penguin. Oh yeah. Oh, maybe it's that. Yeah, maybe it, maybe it's that actor instead. I don't know his name. The young boy. The young boy who plays the penguin. He might not be a young boy. He might be a grown man who looks like a young boy. I'm just talking out my ass over here. Yeah, that's I what, like it. That's what we all do. So unathletic. He's gonna drop that cup. He is. He's like, <laughs> if I just focus on the cup, maybe maybe I won't. Maybe fumble. I won't drop it this time. <laughs> I got banned from so many restaurants for breaking so many glasses. He's wearing a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> He's depressed. I don't know why that's funny to me. Like, this is the poster for the movie. <laughs> <laughs> He's just wearing a t-shirt. The way you've drawn the Traveler, uh -huh. um, I'm getting some, some Joseph Gordon-Levitt vibes. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm kind of seeing that, too. Joseph Gordon-Levitt and the actor who plays the Penguin. I'm going to look up Gotham. his name so we don't have to... Do this yeah. thing we're doing. <laughs> Don't do this thing. We can do a different thing where we know his name. IMDb. So Os I'm Oswald doing it. Cobblepot. <laughs> his name is Oswald Cobblepot. They got an actual person with that name to, yeah. to play. <laughs> his name is Robin Taylor. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. Portrayed For by Robin Taylor. Okay. Get these. Get this curtain in here. Well, I'll do the curtain last. All right, so Joseph Gordon Levitt. Just, I'm going to give him, I'm going to give him these eyes. I always call him Jay Glow. Jay Glow. You do? Yeah, I do. I do. I always call him that. Because like JGL, that's his initials. But Jay Glow. It's so close. It's very close. Oh, this guy should have like a robot prosthetic as well. We'll think about that as we go. Just give him one of them like circles on the neck. Yeah. One of them robot circles. And it's like, oh, what's that for? He's got a little beepy blooper on his He's neck. He's got a little neck blooper. What's that? Does that help him breathe good? Does probably it, doing something. Probably does something. Oh, yeah. That's some, that's some circuitry. There you go. That's a circuit or two. This movie would be called something like Mr. Natural. Oh. Mm. Or just The Natural. The Natural, yeah. Is that a movie? 
Probably. I feel like that's a movie. But that can be this too. Yeah. Movies. Some movies have the same name. Could be called Supernatural. They could be called Supernatural. Nothing has that name that anyone knows of. It could be called um, because it's like they fall in love and they're like he's like a he's like an actual person, not a robot. So you could call it Love Actually. (laughs) That's probably what we should call it. I'm really torn between Supernatural and Love Actually yeah. for the name of this. <laughs> Let's very quickly get some deets in here. Okay. Slap a deet in there. We gotta repel all the bugs with all the that deet. Wow, Nathan. Yeah. Good joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nathan. Nathan. <laughs> wow. Okay. I feel like in this uh this scene, obviously our our hero, mm-hmm. the penguin from Batman, um was like brought Robin here by Taylor. Robin Taylor. The Robin Taylor penguin from Batman. He was brought here like by one of his friends. Yeah. It was like, like, come on, you have to come out and try to meet you people. You didn't get my Facebook inv- or it's gonna be some different you didn't get my Aventer Evite. Yeah. It should have gone to your implant. It's like, like I you don't know have, I don't have, I don't an, have implant. an implant. Oh, I always oh. forget. Well, that's why I came to your apartment hovel. <laughs> You're coming out with me. Stop tonight. being such a hermit. It's my birthday. It's my rebirth day. It's my rebirth day. The day I got my implants. Okay, I'll go out, but don't make me do any sports, okay? <laughs> Why would we do sports? I don't know. I just don't. Just have to check. Just, just making sure. I, I, I never know why anyone does sports, and so they I can't ever figure out why someone would do it, and so I just have to check. <laughs> and I figure it could happen at any time. Sometimes someone just goes, think fast, and then what? throws something at me, and then I do think fast, but I don't... My, the thinking isn't what the issue. It's that it's I'm. The, it's the moving. It's the moving. <laughs> There's another face. Yeah, just I really want this dude you to be. You just really swarmed. wanted another guy down there. He's just looking at us. My problem with this was that there weren't enough. He's like crouched underneath <laughs> the other guy. Oh, he's he, like behind, is he resting his elbow on his head. It looks like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey! Don't forget about me. Don't forget about me, and little George. <laughs> <laughs> Little George is everyone's favorite character in this yeah, movie. Yeah, he's the comedic yeah. relief. Oh, you can ask that guy out? Okay. I, okay, I guess. You know he doesn't have any implants. <laughs> Looks like you're trying to do your own kind of implant in oh him. God. You know what I was saying? Hey. It's, uh, it's a sex. Oh, no, I have to draw implants. Okay. Little George on. is voiced by Danny DeVito, but not played by yeah, Danny no, DeVito. They dubbed over. It's a little, it's a little boy actor. Yeah. <laughs> It's one of the boys from Stranger Things. Yeah, whichever but, one. I don't but care. But he's lip syncing Danny DeVito. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pick any boy you like from they Stranger had, Things. They had Danny DeVito record the lines first. Yeah. The boy has to mouth along to them. <laughs> has to lip sync. Danny was only available for one day, so we got... We got all his lines. There were some rewrites to the script after Danny DeVito recorded those lines, so the tone of the movie... <laughs> Doesn't really go along with it, but no. we really wanted to have Danny involved in the project. Yeah, he was uh, so passionate about it. We spent the majority of our budget on Danny DeVito. Don't ask how we got Joseph Gordon-Levitt. <laughs> Joseph Gordon-Levitt, um, he volunteered. Just really liked the project. Pro bono. Yeah. Okay. Julia, this is wonderful. There we go. This is love actually. <laughs> love actually. Yep, definitely love actually. <laughs> Wow. I've never seen Love Actually. Is this what happens? This is what happens. This is this is pretty much the uh, the Colin Firth storyline. Yeah, <laughs> it goes way off the rails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, good job, guys. I think we made three. These pretty are three absolutely watchable movies. Smash hits in the box <laughs> office <watchable>. and critically. <laughs> um, Criti- critically watchable. <laughs> Critics agree. Critics agree. You can watch it. They are, I guess, movies. Yep. If you if you don't look away, you will watch. They the are whole thing. they are movie posters. Yep. at least all critics agree. One hundred percent of critics agree. Um, uh, if you have any more ideas for like art challenges we could do or things of that nature, let us know in the comments below, and maybe we'll do it. 
Maybe. No guarantee. No guarantee. And uh, as always, <laughs> we're sorry. We're sorry. Sorry. <laughs>